Welcome to Abiding Faith Presence Community. Abiding Presence Faith Community for Divine Worship for the second Sunday of Easter. We ask those that liturgical role silence their microphones. Our celebrant will be Bishop William R. Cavins. Our homilist will be Reverend Deacon Christopher Larson. The intention of today's liturgy is for the people of the parish. Our entrance hymn today is number 444, This is the Day. <coughs> Yeah. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of, our, of the risen Christ, so rich in mercy and boundless in compassion, be with you all. And also, also with you. Brothers and sisters, let us invoke and bless the name of God, the All-Holy, that this water may be for us a sign of the new life in the risen Christ, which in baptism we have all received. <coughs> Lord God, Almighty, creator of all life, of body and soul, we ask you to bless us as we use this Easter water in faith. Forgive our sins and save us from all illness and the power of evil. Lord, in your mercy, give us living water, always springing up as a fountain of salvation. Free us, body and soul, from every danger and admit us to your presence in purity of heart. Grant this in the name of Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. Come forward and bless yourselves. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people. grow gracious God we ask that we may know you in the very in the very recurrence of the paschal feast kindle the faith of the people you have made your own increase we pray the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed by whose spirit they have been reborn 
by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your only begotten one, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us be attentive. from the Acts of the Apostles. Many signs and wonders were done among the people at the hands of the Apostles. They were all together in Solomon's portico. None of the others dared to join them, but the people esteemed them. Yet more than ever, believers in the Lord, great numbers of men and women were added to them. Thus, they even carried a stick out to the streets and laid them on cots and mats so that when Peter came by at least his shadows might fall on one or another of them. A large number of the people from the towns in the vicinity of Jerusalem also gathered bringing the sick and those disturbed by unclean spirits and they were all cured. The word of the Lord and speak to God. <coughs> if thanks to the Lord, for he is good, his love is everlasting. reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, your brother, who share with you the distress, the kingdom, and the endurance we have in Jesus, found myself on the island called Patmos, because I proclaimed God's word and gave testimony to Jesus. I was caught up in spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a voice as loud as a trumpet which said, Write on a scroll what you see. Then I turned to see whose voice it was that spoke to me, and when I turned I saw seven gold lampstands, and in the midst of the lampstands one like a son of man, wearing an ankle-length robe with a gold sash around his chest. When I caught sight of him I fell down at his feet as though dead. He touched me with his right hand and said, do not be afraid. I am the first and the last, the one who lives. Once I was dead, 
but now I am alive forever and ever. I hold the keys to death and the netherworld. Write down, therefore, what you have seen, and what is happening, and what will happen afterwards. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them how his hand and his sides. And the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord, then said again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so have I sent, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, whose sins are you, reta you retained or retained. Thomas called Zephimus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So, the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. And he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails on his hands, and put the finger into his nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now, a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood there in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side. And do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are they who have not seen but have believed. Now, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, and they are not written in this book, but those indeed are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that this belief you may have life in his name. My brothers and sisters, the gospel of the risen Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. <laughs> 
Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Well, reading this gospel and reading the other readings, I wanted to put myself in that room both times. One when he went into first and saw and met with the disciples, and the other one when he was with Thomas. And I often wonder myself, and I've asked people, what would you do in that situation? How would you feel? And the first time, would we be like Thomas? There are things going on in this story, some that are blatant, but some that are not. One is I would like to make a comparison. Back during the Triduum, when we were doing the Passion, we came to a part where Peter had denied Christ. And he was told he was going to do this, but he did not believe or he probably forgot. But as soon as the cock crowed, Jesus came into Peter's midst and their eyes met. Now, we never think of that meeting. And the reason why we don't is because we're just dealing with the passion. But if we go down deeply and seeing what kind of message those eyes proclaimed. Now, if you know anything about the Middle Eastern culture or Mediterranean culture, you know when the parent gives you a look, it's two things. One, you've done something wrong. Two, you're going to get it if you don't quit. But in Jesus' eyes, there was none of that. In Jesus' eyes, it was an eye of love. It was an eyes, it was the eyes of Peter, I understand. I love you, this had to be. So forgiveness and love was in those eyes. Now imagine going back to Thomas, how Jesus' eyes were fixed on Thomas, even though he questioned his belief. There was still a look of love and mercy and say, believe going forward. I am here with you. The questions I want to ask of ourselves is, what will we do and what do we do today? It's like, we need God when we physically see him in the Eucharist, in the tabernacle, when we want something. Oh, God is here. I believe. But what if we have trouble in our lives? that we want to fix ourselves. And we go, we don't need him. We can do it ourselves. Or, if there was a God, why is there, are these things happening to me? Or why are these things happening in the world? And we tend to shut him out and doubt his existence. To me, doubt and disbelief are the same thing. Faith, and trust are the same thing. That's just my opinion. When we doubt someone's existence, it's kind of hard to have faith in someone. But in most incidents, and I say most incidents, instances, we trust our spouse, we trust our friends, we trust our employees, if we're managers, or co-workers, that they will get the job done so you can get your job done. 
Though, like I said, in the perfect world, this may be. Why is it so easy for us to trust in other human beings and believe in human beings? But God, only when we want to. Only when we feel that we need him, that nothing else works. Oh, I have somebody to go to. Him. Or a priest. Or a deacon, bishop. Only when they want to. It's hard for us to do it every day. You know, I always talk about coming down off the mountain. And when I was in college, I went to a retreat. And even when I was in high school, we went, I went to a lot of religious things, Catholic or not. And one of the things that they wanted to instill in us is that yeah, you fall the Lord down, we're clapping, we're singing, we're doing everything, we, we love God, we have a feeling, but then we come home. Sunday, we're fine, we're telling all our friends. And they must think we're nuts, but we're telling them anyway. Monday comes along, we seem to still feel that way. We're, we have good days at work. We're talking to the boss. And they ask me why I'm so happy. This is why. Tuesday, we wanes a little bit. Wednesday, wanes a little bit. Thursday, eh. That's why sometimes when we go to church, we renew that. But it only lasts a little while for some of us. What we want is that light to kindle every day of our lives. And Jesus came to save. Jesus is here right now. Not just in this room, but once we leave the worship. That's why I always say the Mass is never ending. We need to see and not see the Lord. We need to believe that he's there, even though he's not standing right there in our faces, giving us that look. We have to instill in our lives that he is still here. Church or no church, tabernacle, no tabernacle. We need to be like Peter, who wept bitterly and repented, and like Thomas, who finally did believe and went on to start a church in India. We need to rekindle God's love. He is risen. Indeed, He is risen. And we need to say that every single day of our lives, not just during the Easter season, but every single day of our lives. We went through Lent, we went through reconciliation, now that's over. He broke those chains. Now we are free. Hallelujah. We are free. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Let us stand and profess our faith, <coughs> reciting the Nicene Creed as it's found in your order of worship. We believe in one God, the Creator, the Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Redeemer, Jesus Christ, the only child of God, eternally begotten of the Creator. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, one in being with the Creator. Through the Redeemer all things were made. 
for us and for our salvation, Jesus Christ, the Redeemer, came down from heaven. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, he was born of the Virgin Mary and became human. For our sake, Jesus was crucified under Pontius Pilate, suffered, died, and was buried. And on the third day, rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures, ascended into heaven, and seated at the right hand of God. Jesus Christ will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and the reign of God will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the sanctifier, the giver of life, who proceeds from God the Creator, and Jesus Christ the Redeemer, who with the Creator and the Redeemer is worshipped and glorified, and who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With faith and joy, we bring our petitions to our loving God, who gave up Jesus to give us eternal life. Our response will be, through our faith, hear us, our prayer. Through our faith, hear our prayer. That the church may work to uphold the dignity of all people, especially people who are relegated to the margins of our society. Let us pray to the risen Lord. Through our faith, hear our prayer. That local and rural leaders may work to for lasting peace, grounded in humility and justice. We let us pray to the risen Lord. Through our faith, hear our prayer. That on this Sunday, we celebrate faith. We may experience the people, peace that Jesus offered to us of our with and forgives us of all their sins. Let us pray to the Lord. Through, Through our, our faith, faith, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those of our church who never partake in the sacraments and those who struggle with their belief in God, that we may become an ever more honest and generous community which will draw them back by our love, that they may know that they are never alone, that let us pray to the risen Lord. Through our faith, hear our prayer. That I will gather here, very, that I will gather here with us virtually. May we announce the stereotypes and surround our brothers and sisters who are immigrants and refugees. Let us pray to the risen Lord. Through our faith, hear our prayer. For the sick and the distressed in mind or spirit. That the healing that flow out of the from the apostles in Jesus' name may rejoice and strengthen them today. Especially... Anybody who want somebody to be prayed for? The Reverend Dr. Paul Wise. Father Bob Giardini, Bishop Dorian Noble, Tracy Cavins, Michael Smith, Dorothy Williams, and Mary Palmieri. Mary Palmieri. We just pray to the risen Lord. Through our faith, hear our prayer. For the sick and the distressed in the mind and spirit. That the healing that flowed out of the apostles. Oh. For our faithfully departed ones and those close to death, who holds the keys of death in the nether world, who lives forever and ever, may raise them up to be with him in God's glorious kingdom, especially. Let us pray to the risen Lord. Through our faith, faith hear our, our prayer. prayer. Gracious God, we pray these intentions of our hearts. We believe in your care for us. Help us remember this all the days of our life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 The off toward hymn is number 746. Love divine, all loves excelling.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Creator. And the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and for all the church. We bring these gifts of bread and wine in faith to you. We know they come from you, the source of all life. May they bring us to a loving faith in your care for us, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also, also with, with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. And the Lord is here, God, thanks and praise. It is truly right in our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to lodge you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb, who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalt in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sings together in the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Lord, you are holy indeed. You are kind to us and to all. For this we thank you. We thank you above all for your only begotten one, Jesus Christ. He brought us the good news of life to be lived with you forever in heaven. He showed us the way to that life, the way of love. He himself has gone that way before us. He now brings us together at one table and asks us to do what he did. Lord God, we ask you to bless these gifts of bread and wine and make them holy. Change them for us into the body and blood of Jesus Christ, your child. On the night before he died for us, he had supper for the last time with his disciples. He took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread. He gave it to his friends, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which is given up for you. In the same way, he took a cup of wine. He gave you thanks. He handed the wine to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Then he said to them, Do this in memory of me. Great is the mystery of faith.
enjoy all that Jesus did to save us. In this holy sacrifice, which he gave us as a gift to his church, we remember his death and resurrection. God in heaven, accept us together with your beloved Christ. He willingly died for us, but you raised him to life again. We thank you and say, glory to God in the highest, glory to God in the highest. Jesus now lives with you in glory. But he is also here on earth among us. We thank you and say, Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest. One day he will come in glory, and, his, and in his kingdom there will be no more suffering, no more tears, no more sadness. We thank you and say, Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest. Lord God in heaven, you have called us to receive the body and blood of Christ at this table and to be filled with the joy of the Holy Spirit. Through this sacred meal, give us strength in, to place you, to please you more and more. Lord our God, remember the patriarchs from the East and the West, our presiding bishop, Chris, our diocesan bishop, Bill, and all other bishops. Fill all Christians with the gladness of Easter. Help us to bring this joy to all who are sorrowful. Bring us all at last, together with Mary, the mother of God, and all the saints, to live with you and to be one with Christ in heaven. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, almighty Creator, forever and ever. Brothers and sisters of the Lord, we dare to pray as Jesus himself taught us. in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from all sin and anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, my peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Well, let's give each other some sign of peace. Peace with you. 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 Peace with all of you at home. Oh, 
This is Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to his supper. Lord, as I take communion, I recommit my life, my heart, my thoughts, my everything to you. Let us pray for those who are unable to receive Eucharist today. The, um, the prayer has been left out of my, my uh, booklet today. But Lord Jesus, we believe that you are in the Blessed Sacrament. You know those are people around us that may not be able to receive today. They desire you in their hearts with their whole being. Be with them today and always, Lord, as you promised. Amen. Amen. The table is prepared. Come eat and drink. Our communion hymn is number 808, In the Breaking of the Bread.
Our hymn of thanksgiving is number 442, Christ the Lord Risen Again. To honor the Blessed Mother during this Easter season, please join in singing 436, Regina Chaitin. Let us pray. Jesus, you said, blessed are the poor in spirit. It is because of your conviction born out of your own life and learned through the experiences of all you've met. Grant us some, some of the faith and conviction you had that we may see, say, I live as I was born, poor in spirit, and I am blessed. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you for joining us today. Mother's Day is coming up on May 8th. We will mark it with a vigil mass on Saturday, Mark, Saturday, May 7th at 5 p.m. Those wishing to have their mother living or deceased remembered at the altar should submit the name to the church office by May 5th. If you are a registered parishioner and own a business with a website, please contact the pastor about having your business listed on our website at no charge to you. We request that each parishioner take the time to view our YouTube videos. After viewing, please leave a comment. YouTube tracks the number of comments videos receive. The more comments, the higher our ranking. And please help us out by to build our score in Google Analytics by clicking, by checking out our each page of our website and exploring the links at least monthly. As most of you know, I will be gone from May 8th through May 20th. I ask your prayers for a safe journey uh, for Jane and myself to South Africa and back. Um, Deacon Chris will be doing a service, a, 
Sunday celebration of the absence of, of the priest at 10 o'clock on May the 8th. And then we're asking Lucas to preside at the celebration on May 15th. So you'll get a chance to see uh, Lucas presiding in that role. If I'm forgetting something, the bulletin is posted on the website. You can take a look at it there. The Lord be with you. And the Lord be with you. Bow your heads for God's blessing. God our Creator, may our minds be opened like Thomas to the truth we hear and see in Jesus. May our hearts be open to his life, and may our feet be guided on our journey of life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thanks be to God, Alleluia, Alleluia. Our closing hymn is number 522, Lift High the Cross.